He's certainly not the only one, but he was the only one Mm -hmm. who both sees it and was put in a position to actually, you know, his position as a, as a, as a doctor and as the first doctor to have to deal with an outbreak in the continental United States. And also who happens to be the one that God gave the, you know, this, the remedy. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that's a lot of coincidence. Yeah. Coincidence, quote unquote. So so to speak. Right. If you think about that. Yeah. Can I, can I, can I I share some, just some more coincidences? Yeah. So, okay. So he is, he is the, he's the the first doctor in the, in America to deal with this because his community was the first, like we said, the first community to have a major outbreak. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and another thing is that, just on a side point, when you look back at this, you realize it had to be, uh, make she, I don't know how to say, uh, you know, I'm just gonna have to say HCQ. Yeah. Yeah. Most people know it, hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. Okay, I'll say just, well. be, just be careful. Yeah, I'll just I'll say that one time. So from now on, I'll just say HCQ. Yeah. So it had to HCQ had to be the answer. Yeah. It had to be. Nothing else could have been the answer. Yeah. Because and you can't not even Tylenol because not not a, you know Africa and India doesn't they don't have Tylenol. Yeah. But you know what they have? They got HCQ. That's crazy. You got HCQ like dust. Yeah. And they have ivermectin for river blindness and stuff. Ivermectin is not as widespread, mm-hmm. but HCQ is truly, absolutely ubiquitous. Okay, mm-hmm. um, and so and it's the it's literally the only thing that entire countries had, like Honduras, for instance. They all, that's all they had. Yeah, they didn't have any like if if the if the solution was literally anything else. Then yeah. they would have had a widespread pandemic, and who knows how much mass death. Yeah, which is obviously the intention. Yeah, for sure. So you know what that means? That means that God planted the cure before the machinations of the evil people even yeah. began. Yeah, for sure. And somebody might have even known that that HCQ could play a big role in, um, in averting what they were trying to do, okay? But they didn't expect anybody else to put two and two together. Yeah. Okay? And, or, or even those that they did, they didn't expect them to actually do something about it and, do, and, and, and act aggressively. So, so again, it goes back to the question, how come, how come it was my brother who was the first one? Aside from being, the first doctor who actually had to deal with a massive outbreak, right? As a single community doctor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause he was, he was, uh, he was basically the, you know, uh, he served a community of Satma Hasidim. Yeah. 35,000 people that lived in a square mile. Okay. So, uh, he was desperate to save his patients. They were like family. He lived there. He, he was practicing there for almost 20 years. And um, so, so basically, what what was it? Why do, why you know? Like we can speculate. Like how come God chose him? Uh, It's because he happened to be a brilliant doctor, who has the he had you know (coughs) the respect of being a great doctor that people listen to. Like he, he, he really, he really is an exceptional doctor. He, he, did, he did a great job and he really cared about people. And, uh, you know, he, he, he does a great job and that's it. I mean, it's simple as that, you know, he's really dedicated and he was very good at his job. And he's also very learned in, uh, in terms of, uh, in spiritual matters. He knows he's very learned in, in, Has, in Hasidut. He's very learned in Kabbalah and, um, on, on, on some level, people even... You can call it off a little bit. How about... 
you also got cut off a little bit. I'm not sure. Right. Hmm. How about weird. now? Yeah, it's a little better. So, so on top of being a great doctor, he's also, like I was saying, he's, he's very learned and mm -hmm. he, you know, he is very knowledgeable in Hasidut and he was very knowledgeable in Kabbalah mm -hmm. and in practical, in some practical issues, he, you know, he, he's also, um, you know, he, he has, he has some sense. Yeah. And, and aside from people coming to him to seek medical advice, they would also frequently come to him, you know, just to discuss spiritual issues too. Okay, mm -hmm. so, he, so he wasn't just simply, he isn't just simply a doctor. He also is a, is a teacher and a spiritual mentor to, to many people there. Yeah. On top of that, he's a Lubavitcher shliach to the Satmo. That's interesting. <laughs> you know? Is that like, like officially or just not, a, not, 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 a, not, a, not officially, but, yeah. but, you know, officially, like yeah. once, I believe that once the Rebbe disappeared, yeah. From from you know from view, physically right. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, all that official anything official Chabad went out the window for me. Like yeah. you know, the only, the, only, the only thing official. What did you say? All the shluchim and all the all the all the houses. No, I mean, I mean, I, I'm. It, it's fine. I'm just saying that whatever. Only the shluchim that the Rebbe sent out himself, right during his lifetime, yeah. are to me like you know considered like official. Okay. Yeah. Now, the ones who were sent out after his lifetime, they might also be official because, you know, I'm sure, you know, the, the influence, anybody who's like, you know, who, who was guided by the <laughs> Rebbe is, is, and tries to do what he wants people to do, it, it, it is a shliya. You know, anybody who just takes it very seriously. So you don't have, mm -hmm. I don't think it's very important to be yeah. recognized by, you know, you know, a bureaucracy of some kind. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, He's basically the only Lubavitcher um, who lives among the Satmar probably for as long as he did and was in good standing with the community, very good standing. He really, he really gave that community his, uh, his, you know, his, um, his all. Yeah. You know? So, you know, so there's, there's a lot of overlapping things. There's a lot of layering here. And, you know, it's starting to, I think for me, the picture is clearing up as to why, you know, Hashem sent it, gave him the ball, so yeah. to speak. Um, also, and I, I think this might be the most important, even though he is a very excellent conventional doctor, right? Yeah. He was not encumbered by the by the stiff institutional mindset yeah. of people who are generally considered to be conventional doctors. Yeah. He had the knowledge and the experience and he kept up to date with the latest you know, research and the latest uh, findings um, because he was always, in, he was very, he, he's not one to rely on what he learned in medical school right, to treat people. He wants to see what is happening now. He was always researching the latest to provide the best for his patients. Yeah, for, sure. for sure. And it's always like, you know, the thing that kills me when you come to people and, and you say, you know, about your, your brother's thing and they're like, well, there needs to be studies. I'm like, okay. So when it comes to his thing, you said there needs to be studies, but when it, come, but when it comes to the things that they're forcing us to take, you said, you say, well, we don't have time for, uh, you know, approvals. We have to use under, we just don't have time. So for that, we don't have time. But for this, we have time. Now, of course, nonstop uh, hypocrisy. I mean, that's, it's that's, just, that's, it's, that's not about, it's like double speak, you know? Double speak, gaslighting, you know, yeah. nonstop hypocrisy, and they enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. The reason why, you know, like, usually when people get accused of being called like hypocrites, they get ashamed. They, you know, they try to deny it. And this and that. They're like, These you guys know, are no yeah, no shame. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like picture, like you know, when you're a kid, and somebody says, "Ooh, you like that girl," you know, you make sense. You, you like Marsha. You're like, no, I don't. Shut yeah. up. You know, like yeah. that kind of. Yeah, that's how people are like when, when you call them hypocrites. Yeah. Right, but not these guys. They, they love it. They're like, yeah, I know. We're really, isn't it? We really enjoy it. You know, look how we get away with it too. It's like the emperor from yesterday. 
young fool, of course. You know, I, of course, I'm a hypocrite. I was just going to say, I was just going to say about the whole thing that you said yesterday. With the... Yeah. So, so basically, you know, so he is not a, he's a conventional doctor, but he is not trapped in the conventional mindset. He wasn't trapped in that prison, that institutional prison. Yeah. Right. Uh, he, he is aware and is familiar with spiritual realities. Okay. And you have a lot of doctors who are from the Orthodox community who consider themselves Orthodox, but it would seem that when they are doctoring, yeah, it's, uh, it's separate. Right. Where is this, you know, the spiritual part, where is that now? Now, just to be fair, not every, not every Orthodox doctor gets to be a doctor in a very spiritual community. People who, you know, you're, most of your patients are also people who are familiar with that mindset yeah. uh, with, with the spiritual realities or they're mm -hmm. aware of them. Okay. And so that can cultivate, you know, the, like it was probably, you know, easier for my brother to, to develop that aspect of himself as well because of who his patients are. So not everybody gets the privilege of having that opportunity. So let's it's, like, it's like he was able to use the operating system because the it fit with the uh you know they could be macabre so to speak yeah you and, can but, install but, that right and then if you have you know another doctor who's also from yid but he doesn't get you know he has to be around people who are not uh familiar with that so he doesn't get to develop yeah. as much so, you know, I'm not, it's, it's, I'm not trying to be critical, but I'm just saying that it's, it, it was a unique opportunity, a unique circumstance mm -hmm. that my brother was in. Yeah. Okay. So that allowed him to cultivate this non, this kind of like, he was free from the, from this sickness that we're seeing. Look at the doctors yeah. now. Yeah, for sure. Right. They are, they are jailed in the institutional mindset. Yeah. They are institutionalized. You know, you recall? Can, can I tell you something real quick? Like I remember, uh, it makes me, it reminds me of when you mentioned the whole the doc, the doctors in most of these hospitals that are not combining, you know, spiritual aspect. It reminded me of when I first started trading stocks, and my boss, just this Chinese guy, he would go, "When you're in a bad trade, he's like, he's like, just get out. He's like, we're not, we're not a synagogue, we're not a church, we're not a mosque. We don't sit and we don't pray." We don't pray for things to go our way. <laughs> and at, for, at first I thought, I'm like, eh, that, that makes sense, you know? But it, um, and then in the back of my mind, I was like, well, why not? I know. You're Do a we fool. know where our parnasa comes from? Do we know that maybe sometimes like Hashem can help us in a certain jam or situation? Yeah, we have to do our hishtadlos, but like sometimes, yeah, maybe it helps to just like, yeah, say to him, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> of course. Like the Jew, the Jew in the back of my mind was like, well, this Chinese guy's wrong. Sort yeah. of. But the, you were going to say, it. I'm sorry. I don't, know. I, don't I mean, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So, so basically, um, so my brother had this unique opportunity, you know, to cultivate uh, this mindset, which freed him. From, from the institutional mindset. He wasn't as trapped in it because, uh, because he had this opportunity to not be trapped in it. So, so it, it seemed that he had all the qualities necessary to, to, to push this past the establishment. So just, just, to, just to, I, I wanted to go back for a second. I was gonna talk about the idea of being institutionalized. That's funny. Hopefully yeah. not in the way that we're thinking about. No, but that's the thing. See, yeah. it, that is exactly what it is. Because yeah, for sure. like, I, I even remember in the Shawshank Redemption, right? They, you know, yeah. they, or other prison movies, they talked about like being institutionalized, right? Mm -hmm. Where you are put in a, an institution which breaks you. The institution itself corrals your mind and like a prison is an institution, is an institution, and it, it's a system which is mm -hmm. created to break your spirit or to break you 
It's an attempt to break you of whatever makes you an individual. It's, it's a prison-like mentality. Yeah. So when it comes to prison, like actual prison, you know, <laughs> it's kind of understandable because if you're in there, if you're a violent offender, uh, you know, then perhaps it's good to be broken of that mentality. Yeah. Perhaps, but okay, we could also argue that there are better ways, but that's not for this conversation. Yeah. So, but the institutional mindset, like every institution has this prison-like uh, effect. Okay, if you're part of an institution, then you're, you're, you're not encouraged to, to think creatively and independently. Yep. You're not encouraged. You're encouraged yeah. to be a drone. There's just protocols and we have to go by protocols. And, you know, it's like the yeah. doctor friends I talked to, they're like, you know, a friend of mine said, said we're, you know, all these not, we're, we're hanging by a string. I'm, and I said, and I said, yeah, you guys are being used. You guys are being, you guys have been weaponized. You, you're being used and you're being uh, just tortured. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you know, these poor doctors in these hospitals, they have to watch, you know, people already on the, the kind of the no hope, no hope uh, level of things. That's for Shalom. And then, <laughs> of course, they're going to be like, oh my God, the, the other, you know, the only other solution is the schmacks. Because we see that at least the schmacks, even if they end up here, they're whatever, they're not going to be in ICU, which is BS because yeah. today in Canada, you see the stats from Canada. Okay, the non ICU people, most of them uh, are in the, in the hospital, there are schmacks. And even the ICU people, it's like three out of every seven. It's 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 slightly less than the unsmacks, but it's still a good amount of people that are in ICU that are smacks. That's, yeah. the, that's in Canada. I don't know how it is here. Similar. And, um, you know. Look, you, re you read like articles every day, like they canceled an entire cruise because, because there was a 99% yeah. Or ninety-eight percent of uh, passengers yeah. on the cruise were schmaccinated, and they yeah. all and there was an outbreak of COVID, so they had to yeah. cancel the whole cruise. You keep yeah. hearing about stuff like this, like literally every single yeah. day. Yeah, you know, sure. mass groups of people. Yeah, all schmaccinated. People are catching on. You know, it's like. Um. So. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so basically. Um, this institutional mindset, by the way, right? That we're talking mm -hmm. about. My brother was free enough of it in order to be able to bring this to, to people and also not be bogged down by institutional loyalty. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that he broke free from the institution that he was first a part of when he came to that community because there's, there's, a, there's another... Uh, there's a health center there. I'm not going to say yeah. it out loud because yeah. whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that hired him, and that's how we came to that community initially. Yeah. And then, um, you know, they were stifling him, and he decided to go off on his own. Yeah. Okay. And then, basically, most of the community went over to him. Okay. Interesting. So, so he broke free from that institution. And now, had he been still working there, I think history would have played out a little bit differently. It's possible. Yeah. Okay, because he would have felt the, the burden of having to go by, uh, by top-down uh, you know, directives. He would have to follow, he would be forced to follow the directives yeah. of whoever runs that center. And, you know, need I, need, need I say more? Yeah. I don't. Okay. So, so, so that's also an important part of the story. Okay. Any historians out there. All right. And so, you know, just on a side, on a side note, if you take this institutional mindset, right. And you, you look forward like in science fiction, right. Mm -hmm. You come up with the Borg. The a Borg. Oh, okay. the Borg from Star Trek. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a Trekkie, so I don't know what you okay. no, no, I'm just, I'm, But everybody knows the Borg. I mean, you've okay. seen the Borg, you know, those, those like uh, kind of zombie robot things, right? Ah, okay, gotcha. Okay. Right? Like, okay. You know, we are the Borg. Resistance is futile, right? Like, <laughs> you know, they say stuff like that. So we, we will, what do, what do they yeah. say? We will, we will add your 
your uniqueness to our, our collective, meaning like we, we will appreciate and we will absorb what is unique about you into our collective to improve us. Yeah, that's right? funny. So, yeah, so, but, but basically resistance is futile yeah. because the system is, it's so efficient. Everybody functions, it's such, it's, you know, to yeah. the leader of the Borg, it's like the ultimate bliss in the universe. Yeah. Perfect order, you know, it's like mm -hmm. it's a Darth yeah. Vader thing. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so, you know, not good, obviously, you know, when it plays out to its uh, logical conclusion. It's in the, it's like in the movie, what is it, Fifth Element, that planet that just incinerates everything. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. There's no, like, in the movie, they say nothing about it, no name, yeah. no nothing. Just It's just evil. It's just a concept yeah. to come together. And, you know, we we're talking, you know, because going back to basically the question was, uh, how come my brother, right? Like, why did it, why, why was he chosen? So I was just kind of laying out some of the characteristics and circumstances which made him the right guy for the job, in my, in my view. I feel like at this point he is like a. I mean, this is a major Lahav deal, obviously. He's like he's like a Avram Avinu kind of figure, where he's, he's not, basically he's not Lahav. He's not Lahav though. He's he's exactly like Avram Avinu. Yeah, like he he he's it's like literally him against the whole medical world. Not against, but like meaning against the medical world that we can see actually talking and open. Because I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who doctors, tons of doctors who agree with him. I would call I would call my brother the medical Mashiach. That's funny. Mashiach figure. Mashiach figure. A Mashiach figure. No, that's what I said. The Mashiach of the medical world. Yeah, figure, figure. Of yeah. that of that whole sphere. Yeah. Yeah. That whole, you know what I mean? That whole world. That that the medical veldt. Could be. Okay, because um, what really what he's bringing. Is like you see the idea behind it was actually the, the, the simplest stuff, right? It's not it's not it's not some hyper yeah. compl complicated yeah. therapy with many moving parts. Yeah, it's right? it's it's, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a medicine that my grandmother was given for malaria when she was three years old in 1937 or something. Right, right. It's, a, it's the simplest of things. So it's not the it's not the it's not the treatment itself that is really special even though thank god we have it but like it's the fact that he was he's able to push past the institutional mindset and fight hard to bring it to the attention of of the world because he didn't feel that he needed to be uh he he, he didn't pledge fealty you know to to the institution that he works for over uh, over his fealty to being a doctor and saving people yeah. okay yeah, sure. and to serve god in that in that way yeah. okay so um so and it has to be a person who is god fearing and what i mean by god fearing i don't mean just like a, a, an observant person culturally i mean a person who uh who is affected whose actions are affected to a large extent by uh, his, his fear and respect for God. And also with, a, with, a, with some level of a, desi a desire to do God's will, meaning like aside from the fear, but also a, uh, a, 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 in the positive sense, also a, a, an actual legitimate desire to do what God wants him to do. So he has those characteristics, he does. And uh, I actually, you know, what's funny about that? You, you brought up the Avram, the Avraham thing, right? So he, I've seen him post uh, this meme. You've probably seen it too. And it says, he's, it's, like, it's like a cartoon, one, one guy standing there alone. And then it's, there's like an entire, like, you know, thousands or millions of people standing in front of him. And he's saying, yes, all of you are wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that. Fact, I saw that. That's what it, Avraham, basically, I don't know who any, can you think about anybody else who literally was one single person going against the entire world except Abraham and my brother? <laughs> I can't. Okay. Yeah. Um, but as a doctor, just think about like, you know, my brother's role as a doctor. He, he was alone, 
for a long time. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and when I say alone, I mean really alone. And it doesn't matter whether or not there are some people out there that kind of that agreed with the concept, like Bacola. He agreed with the concept of you know of what my brother was proposing. You know, like to to treat with you know with lot with a combination of medications and not wait till people yeah. um, go you know go to the hospital like treat them yeah. at home. My brother yeah. just started doing it. He didn't make declarations. He just did it. Yeah. And it worked without, without, without fanfare, without, I mean, without fanfare, yeah, without making now. Right. Yeah. okay, without having any committees, without, yeah. he just started doing yeah. it. End of story. Yeah, let's and have, let's really have double blind peer reviewed. Yeah, by the way, man, I wanted to mention this whole peer review thing. Yeah. Did you see, like, I sent you the video of this guy, Dr. Uh, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry, I just want to say, McCullough yeah. is, is, I appreciate his support and everything that he's doing is awesome. He's definitely helpful in, 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 in spreading the message to a, a much wider, I mean, the, you know, it couldn't have done it without him, really. You know what I mean? Like he, yeah, the fact sure. that he, sure. the fact that he committed, you know, his name to this, and he he, he really did go out on a limb. Yeah. Um, but you know, he's still part of the institution of the medical institution. Yeah. You know. Sure. So it's different. So basically, so my brother is he was alone entirely alone so long i cannot tell you only one doing it was amazing 